Alex Bruce from Adelphi. Happy to have you here. And Thanks for having me. <laughs> been able to talk to you. I'd like to talk to you about uh, Adelphi as an independent partner, not so much about the distillery we yeah. did that last time. Um, can you tell me a little bit about how you work, how you select your casks? So uh, traditionally, we've only ever selected uh, casks that we liked ourselves. It's a very simple criteria. Mm. Um, the taste, it doesn't really matter where they come from, how old they are, uh, it's all about the taste. And as long as we're happy with that taste uh, and we enjoy them ourselves, then we feel that that, that is suitable criteria for selection. Um, over the years, uh, obviously single malt's in high demand, uh, and in particular single cast. So in the old days, we could literally walk into a warehouse, sample, and just buy the one or the two that we wanted. Um, nowadays, more and more, we tend to buy a large parcel blind. Uh, we then bring that into our own warehouse and then do our selection. And anything we don't want, once we've done that, we can trade off uh, to other people. Okay. Um, so that trading stock is very important too, because it, it gives us access to more mm. uh, reciprocal stock. How, how much of the stock you buy do you keep then? Uh, in any given year at the moment, we're probably keeping about 20% okay. um, of what we've bought. And the selection is done together with, uh, with uh, Charlie? Yeah, so um, the initial selection, which is more of a, a rejection, I suppose, mm. is myself and a couple of my colleagues. Okay. Um, then when we're happy with what we've selected, uh, we then do a much more detailed analysis with tasting notes and everything, and that's when we bring Charlie in. And just out of interest, do you also buy a new make that will mature in your own warehouses? Or? For, for Adelphi? Yeah. No. No. no um, we've always operated in a just-in-time mm -hmm. fashion, so we're buying maybe six months to a year we might leave something but generally speaking it's it's bought and bottled pretty quickly um, what i would say is that as our demerkin grows um, so once we have our own single malt out there we may start to do some what we call reciprocal fillings okay so we can swap our demerkin spirit for other people's spirit so that would be a, a case of, of bringing it on um, ourselves as well one thing that came to my mind when we looked at your portfolio you don't have uh, wine cask finished uh, no. bottlings. Why is that? Well, the, the, the method that we use of buying on taste mm -hmm. means that we don't have to finish. Right. The whole point is it's, if it's good enough uh, to bottle, then we simply bottle it. Um, and because we don't have that younger stock to bring on, there's no reason for us to finish it in, in a wine cask or in something else. Yeah. Um, also, I suppose my personal taste and, and uh, Charlie's as well, over the years is that we want them something to be as, as um, pure as possible uh, as it was originally designed um, and while wine, fun wine finishes can be very popular uh, it's not really our style I suppose. All right. And do you think it's getting harder to get good stuff? Um, it was like five or ten years ago? So when you say good, yeah. uh, no. I don't, think, standards. I don't think it's harder to get good whiskey, yeah. it's harder to get older whiskey. Mm. And by older, I mean uh, from the 1980s, 1990s. Yeah. Um, that stock is drying up quite, quite literally. Um, and what is left is very, very expensive because the, there is huge demand for some of these old makes mm -hmm. in the likes of China. Yeah. And as an independent bottler, it would be stupid for us to try and compete with those kind of prices. Yeah. Uh, but having said that, there is also a much higher quality of production since about 2000. Uh, the, the wood management's been much stronger. So what we're getting now in that kind of eight to 12 year bracket is much better than it was 10 years ago. Uh, so it, it swings and roundabouts if you like. And do you think the situation will change in the near future? So that more older stock becomes available? No, no. It, it's going. I mean, it literally, yeah. you can't replace it. Um, one thing you might look at is uh, bringing on current eight to 12 year old, mm -hmm. 15 year old, whatever, yeah. and maturing that yeah, into exactly. the 20s. And I'm sure we'll see more of that. So, you know, in a few years' time, we might be talking about a lovely old 2005 bottling, for example, which currently sounds quite young. You know. And the last question, what's your personal favorite of the new bottlings you have? Oh, um, <laughs> well, we've got a lot of sherry casts at mm. the moment, which is great. I, I love sherry casts myself. Um, I suppose if I was to pick one, well, I'll pick two, actually. Right. Uh, one that surprised us a huge amount was, uh, it's called the Breath of Highlands. Or the breath of the highlands 
where we can't actually name the, the source distillery. Um, and it's only 12 years old, but it's incredibly complex. Lovely sweet cherry and some really nice kind of clove spicy notes, almost like a kind of Christmas, you know, in a glass. So there's that one at, at the younger age. And then uh, one of the few remaining older casts that we have at the moment, which is a 25 year old Beaumont uh, uh -huh. refill sherry, but, and that is just multi-layered, uh, super complex whiskey. Okay, Alex, thank you for the thank time you. you spent with us and have a nice rest of the day here in Wilhelm. Thank you very much. Back.